What's happening, fam? This week we peeping Mad Beauty with the Goldfish by Donna Tart. 27-year-old Theo Decker is holed up in an Amsterdam hotel, sick as a dog, and sweating that the popo might bust in there any second. And even though he don't blame nobody but himself for this mess, he think he could have stayed on the righteous path if his mama wouldn't have died 14 years ago. The majority of what follows in his book is a flashback. When Theo was just a little G, he was hitting up an art museum with his mama one day when he peeped game at two of the finest things he ever seen. A redhead baby girl named Pippa and a painting called the Goldfinch. Brother can't keep his eyes off of that dime when BOOM! A bomb goes off killing almost everybody up in there, including Theo's mama. Damn, they killed his mama? When Theo come to, the old geezer who was rolling with Pippa, who named Welty, be all like, uh, say, bruh, my white ass about to die. Take this ring and that shit over there. Thinking he talking about the goldfinch painting, Theo boosts that art and bounces before the police arrive. Since Theo don't want to hustle on the streets, brother shack up with his boy Andy and his fam the barbers. One day, Theo finds Welty's old crew and returns the ring to his partner Hobie. Hobie like, preach blood? Theo runs into fine ass Pippa there too and finds out that that explosion left her all kinds of jacked up. Their reunion don't last long cause Pippa gets shipped off to Texas even though Hobie wanted to stay. Still ain't all bad for Theo cause Hobie starts schooling him on how to restore antiques up in his shop. Plus, Theo living a baller's dream up at the barber crib, but all that go to sh- when Theo's highest balls pop who walked out on Theo and his moms back in the day, swang in the town, scoop up Theo, and take him to live with him in Vegas. Up in Sin City, Theo spent his nights smoking fatties with his new friend Boris. Eventually, Theo's deadbeat daddy tried to steal all Theo's cash monies, and not long after that, dies in a car crash. Mm. Theo know he gotta get the hell out of Dodge before he gets thrown into foster care or something. So he packs up the goldfinch and pieces out to New York, where he hits up Hobie. Turns out, bootylicious Pippa there. But as always, their reunion don't last too long. Eight years later, Theo hustling with Hobie, slinging antiques up in his shop. Theo still got his mind on Pippa 24-7. But she shacked up with some player in London. Since Theo can't have Pippa as his biddy, he get engaged to Kitsy Barber, one of Andy's sisters. Truth is, homeboy been up to no good lately. Not only is he popping pills on the reg, but he been flipping fake antiques to people like it ain't no thing. And now some haters trying to blackmail him for doing it. This dude, Lucius Reeve, even whip out the big guns and say, I know you know where that goldfinch is. Don't make me sick the fuzz on your ass. Oh, sh-. Then Theo find out a day before his engagement party that Kitsy still got it bad for some hood ass brother named Tom. And if that wasn't bad enough, Boris show up and say he jacked the goldfish from Theo years ago and he been using it for some shady deals that yielded some fat stacks. Mm. Feeling like a real dick, Boris tell Theo he want to help him get it back. All they got to do is fly to Amsterdam and get it from the dude who got it. Ain't no thing, right? But when they get there, Boris pull out a piece and start going hypey in his bitch. Eventually, Boris gets one in the arm and Theo murks a brother. But some asshole gets out of there with the painting. Thinking they about to get got by the law any second now, Boris and Theo split up. Theo just locked himself in a hotel room, throwing back pills and marinating on suicide. Out of nowhere, Boris come back and say, it's all good, baby. I sick the cops on those haters, and now we got a swole reward for finding the paint. Turn out, I actually led the 5-0 to a whole bunch of paint. So we swimming in change now. Now Theo in the clear with that Reed fool too. When Theo get back to New York, he comes clean with Hobie about slanging fake stuff. Then he starts traveling the world, making things right with the people he played. In the end, he ain't got Pippa, ain't got the painting, and things ain't so hot with Kitsy. Man, sometimes loving beautiful things can be a real sh- show. This book right here has stirred up all sorts of beef between critics. Some say it's a bunch of bullshit front like it's all profound, while others saying it's the illest rhyme to hit the shelves in years. So when it won the Pulitzer in 2014, the haters really started hating on a girl. But on the real, everybody just need to chill. This book got its share of literary swagger. The two dopest motifs are for show mirrors and the moon. Theo mentions a dream about his mama at the beginning of the book and also at the end. And up in dream world, Theo peeping her through a mirror. Mirrors representing how the same things happening over and over, all cyclical and 
For example, Carol Fabricius, the thug who painted the Goldfinch painting, died in an explosion. An ass load of years later, the painting almost get wrecked in another explosion. This is what Theo's mama calling a time warp, AKA a way of seeing things twice or more than twice. Also, Theo always bitching about how much of a deadbeat scrub his daddy be. But Theo shouldn't be talking mess, cause he end up so strung out and f***ed up that they basically doubles of each other. Popping pills and getting freak nasty with more than one girl at a time. As for the moon, it usually represents the tension between permanence and impermanence. Check it. Theo's mama lay a story on Theo that her daddy once told her. Daddy lifted me up on the fairgrounds and told me to look up at the moon. When you feel homesick, he said just look up because the moon is the same wherever you go. Thing is, after mama died and shit started going south for old Theo, he don't actually see anything familiar when he peeping the moon. The only point of reference was the moon, riding high above the clouds, which though bright and full seemed weirdly unstable somehow. Not the pure anchoring moon of the desert. So if the moon ain't always the same like mama say, then maybe nothing stays the same forever. Matter of fact, that becomes one of Theo's main jams by the end of the book. Art gonna last forever, but the clock is ticking for human beings. For humans trapped in biology, there was no mercy. We lived a while. We fussed around for a bit and died. We rotted in the ground like garbage. Time destroyed us all soon enough. After beasting through the pain of death, rejection, and drug addiction, Theo get real toe up and realize that humans ain't nothing more than bags of meat that gonna rot one day. But that painting, on the other hand, ain't got no expiration date on it. Unlike humans, objects like the painting, Hobie's Noah's Ark Antique, and the Thug Notes book gonna keep flowing through history, creating mad meaning on its way. It exists, and it keeps on existing, and I add my own love to the history of people who have loved beautiful things. But since us humans just shrivel up and die so damn fast, life is just straight up meaningless. Girl even give a shout out to my brother Albert Camus at the beginning of the book saying, the absurd does not liberate, it binds. Ain't no doubt there was a lot of thought put into this piece, but to be honest, it ain't really my thing, man. I mean, if life is absurd, then Theo can't be saying sh like the world is a catastrophic cesspool. That sound more like extreme pessimism than absurdism to this thug. But that don't mean there's anything wrong with people liking it. It's just different strokes for different folks. So let me drop a time warp on your ass and say again, this book ain't all bullshit. So don't let the haters tell you otherwise. But that being said, if you want to check out a new book that's impressive as hell, watch me break down Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn by clicking here. And yo, don't forget to claim your own copy of the Thug Notes book coming out August 18th. Get them while they're hot, man. You heard? Peace.